what a beautiful day. Guess who just landed the lead role in the musical club's next play? Yep, me. As I immersed myself in the rhythm of the music, ouch, I bumped into someone and fell over. Are you blind? You think you're so special you can just waltz around the place as you please? Not again. Why do I keep running into her? That's Kiera, the mean girl from my musical club. I sing, she dances, I always make sure to stay in my lane, but for some reason, Kiera won't stop criticizing me. Ugh, please, you sound like a screeching cat. Give me fingernails on a chalkboard over your squawking any day. Why is she gotta be so mean? Huh? What's this? Oh, a wallet. Someone must have dropped it. But I'm the only person in this alley. There must be an ID card or something in it, right? So I opened the wallet to check it, but nope. No student card, no ID. Instead, there's just a strange photo and a bunch of VIP membership cards with the name Sophia on them. Ooh, these places are swanky. This person must be super wealthy. I gotta hand this into the cop station. But wait, isn't this... Oh my god, a ticket to see Franz Ferdinand tonight! I love that band! And it's for the VIP area. Hmm, even if I bring this to the cops now, they still won't be able to find the owner before the concert anyway. We shouldn't let such an awesome ticket go to waste, right? So, what if... I'll enjoy tonight's concert on this girl's behalf, then I'll hand the wallet to the cops later. Honest! Wow, this is the biggest stage I've ever seen in my life! I got to my seat and eagerly waited for the show to start when I heard a voice next to me. Hey, you must be Sophia. My gosh, this guy was gorgeous! But he'd mistaken me for someone else. Wait a minute. That's right, Sophia was the name on the cards, the wallet's owner. I was still looking for a way to explain this awkward situation when he continued, Glad to meet you. I'm Roman, and I've heard a lot about you from my parents. They're kind of good at arranging things, aren't they? Because I really admire this band. I should have foreseen this happening. I mean, who goes to a concert alone? Luckily for me, it appears that this Roman guy had never met the real Sophia before. For one night only, I could pretend to be her, right? And guess what? The guy was not only super cute, but also a talented musician. He'd spent most of his life in Italy and had not long returned to the US to attend college here. Through him, I learned that Sophia was a gifted singer and both their parents set this meeting up so that Roman could help her singing career. Talking to Roman felt so natural and soon I was singing and swaying to the music alongside him. As soon as I arrived home, I immediately went online to find more information about Roman. Wow. His SoundCloud account has over 200,000 subscribers! <sighs> Handsome and talented, he's like a James Dean of modern times. As I was daydreaming, my phone vibrated. He texted me. I had a great time tonight. I'm having a small welcome home party at the Madison Club. I heard you go there often. If you're not busy, would you like to join us? The Madison Club? As in, one of the most expensive country clubs in the state? The initiation fee alone costs a thousand dollars, and this girl is a frequent flyer? And, yup, here's the Madison Club VIP membership card. I know, I know. But I still had loads of music-related questions to ask Roman. Just this once. Then I would definitely hand it in. Now, on to the next problem. I couldn't wear these mediocre outfits to the Madison Club. I needed something demure, but expensive-looking. Hmm, if I was Sophia, where would I shop? Yes, the Crystal Lane Mall. The next morning, I strolled up to the exclusive shopping mall with all of my savings. But how can a dress this short cost $5,000? Are there actually people who are willing to pay that much for this tiny fabric? The only item I could afford was a sparkly hairpin. So be it. I gritted my teeth, taking the hairpin to the checkout counter, along with all the cash I had on me and the membership card. But surprisingly, not only did I get the hairpin for free, but they also gifted me this cute bag. Apparently, it was my birthday. Well, Sophia's birthday, to be exact. Honestly, I felt kind of guilty enjoying these services in Sophia's name, but I didn't spend any of her money. Seeing as this bag's a freebie, I get to keep it, right? The next day, I settled on a simple but pretty dress and my beautiful new bag and wore them to school, as I planned to go straight from there to the party. 
When my best friend Anna came over to me, she took one look at my bag, then <gasps> gaped in disbelief. A Chanel bag? Did you sell a kidney to buy it? <laughs> it was a gift. Uh, where did you get that? That's a limited edition for VIP members of the Crystal Lane Mall only. Spill it. It's a fake, yeah? Kiera and her unruly friends were at it again. I tried to pull Anna away as I didn't want any trouble, but she still managed to clap back at them. It's 100% authentic. Maisie's rich boyfriend got it for her. Jealous much? Kiera sneered, then said unless I called my boyfriend over, she would tell the whole school that we were tragic liars. Come on, Maisie. Show them what humiliation feels like. Oh no. What should I do? Thanks to Anna's expectant looks and Kiera's smug grin, I had no choice but to ask Roman to pick me up after school. Um, he says he'll come get me after class. As soon as I stepped out of the school gate, I saw Roman waiting next to a shiny Bugatti Chiron. He greeted me with a smile, then opened the door for me. I didn't need to turn around to know that Kiera was watching me with fiery eyes. After this, she wouldn't dare to look down on me again, right? Ooh, this place was even more lavish than I imagined. As we were early, Roman invited me to sing a song while he played the piano. I started singing, and he too joined in to harmonize, and this moment felt just great. How cool was it seeing him all immersed in music? By the time we finished our performance, I realized a crowd had gathered around us, and they all burst into wild applause. An angelic voice and a genius musician. What a perfect couple. I turned to Roman and saw him smiling fondly at me. Wow, I knew my parents said you were good, but I had no idea you'd be that incredible. Feeling my face heating up, I quickly excused myself, then ran to the bathroom, well, once I could find it, to calm down. Yeah, so this was a confusing mess, but it didn't change the fact that my heart was still thudding like crazy. This experience was like daydreaming, but maybe I should tell him the truth before things went too far. I returned to see Roman talking with a girl. Seeing me coming, Roman waved me over and said, Here she is. Hey, Sophia. I've just been chatting with your little sister. Oh no, I was going to tell Roman the truth myself, but when the girl turned around and isn't that Kiera? So Kiera is my, I mean, Sophia's sister? Kiera seemed as surprised as I was as she made up an excuse and left. Huh, did she really just leave without making a scene? The next day, I turned up at school with the wallet and looked for Kiera, only I couldn't find her anywhere. When the last bell rang, I received a message from her that said, Meet me in the alley behind school. I nervously arrived at the rendezvous spot and saw Kiera waiting there. Here's your sister's wallet. Sorry I didn't return it sooner. But to my surprise, she didn't even take the wallet. Thief, you'll pay for that. What did she mean by that? Let me be clear, I didn't steal this. I just picked it up by accident. I was always going to hand it in. Then why did you use my sister's name and membership cards? I just, no more excuses, stealing is still stealing. If you don't want everyone, including Roman, to know that you're an identity thief, you'd better do what I say. You will sing for me to lip sync at the city's upcoming singing contest. Singing contest? But Kiera's a dancer, not a singer. Suddenly, a voice from behind startled me. Here you are, Sophia. I've been looking for you. I turned and saw Roman's happy, Oh, so cute face. He'd be so gutted when he found out that I'd lied to him from the start. Sensing my feelings, Kiera just smirked at me before she left. Remember our deal, sister? It turned out that Roman had just finished composing a new song that day and wanted me to record a demo for it at his studio. But this isn't right. I hesitated, then blurted out, Roman, actually, I'm not. Roman interrupted before I could finish my sentence and showed me the poster of an upcoming singing contest. Oh, it was the one Kiera mentioned earlier. You should give it a try. It's a good opportunity. I shook my head sadly, but I can't. Why? How can I tell Roman that I can't participate in the contest because I have to help Kiera lip sync? So I just told him some baloney about having a family thing on that day. When I got home, I decided there's only one thing for it. I had to block Roman. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but I had to stop this web of lies now before they overtook my life. On the day of the singing contest, 
Although I'd pre-recorded the song for Kiera, she still dragged me along with her. Hmm, that's odd. She didn't seem her usual brash self. Maybe the nerves had got to her? Then, midway through her performance, she misjudged a move and her mic clattered to the floor. As she was standing there dumbfounded, my voice continued to blast out. The whole room fell silent. Then slowly, the murmurs began to rise. Everyone pointed and commented on Kiera, and I heard the man sitting next to me muttering, She's brought more shame on our family. How could I tell anyone that's my daughter? Oh, so this is Kiera's father? And the woman sitting next to him, probably her mother, was also shaking her head in boredom. At that moment, a staff member approached them to say something, and I could see their faces turn pale before they rushed out of the auditorium. Seeing that, Kiera burst into tears, then rushed off the stage. Jeez, how can parents treat their child like that? Kiera may have been a mean girl, but she didn't deserve that. I was about to go check if she was okay when a hand pulled me back. It was Roman. Maisie, it's your turn. Right at that moment, the host of the show called me to the stage by my real name. Huh? What was going on? I turned to look at Roman, but grinning, he just wished me luck and handed me the mic. And the music started. It was the song that Roman and I had sung together. I took a deep breath to calm myself, then sang my heart out. When I ended the performance, all three judges stood up to applaud, and the audience cheered me on. Oh dear, am I dreaming? What is all this? Do you know who I really am? Yeah, of course. I figured that out ages ago. Turns out me not knowing where the restrooms were in the country club gave the game away. <laughs> so he did his research and found out that I wasn't actually Sophia. Only because he still wanted to see me, he pretended not to know so we could carry on like normal. He also accidentally witnessed Kiera making me sing for her performance, so he decided to register me. Talking about Kiera, I wanted to make sure she was okay. We searched around and found her sitting outside, sobbing. It's okay. There will be other competitions. I'm not upset about that. It's my sister. She's missing. Through tears, Kiera told us about how from a young age, her parents wanted her and her sister to pursue a career in music. However, Kiera found a love of dance, while Sophia excelled at singing, making her favorable to their parents. Regardless of how many dance contests Kiera won, they always overlooked her talent. Then, when she excitedly told them that she'd bagged the lead dance role in the school play, they just went on about Sophia instead. So, feeling disheartened and jealous, Kiera threw away her sister's wallet, the one that I accidentally picked up that day. In this singing contest, Kiera wanted to win against her sister in front of their parents for once, so she got me into this whole lip-syncing plan of hers. But last night, Sophia found out about it, and they had an argument. Then, in anger, Kiera blurted out nasty things, such as how she longed for Sophia to vanish from her life. Only that morning, she woke up and found that her sister had actually gone. Until now, Sophia still hadn't even shown up at the auditorium when it's soon going to be her turn to perform. What if Sophia never comes back? I shouldn't have been so mean. Roman and I comforted Kiera. Then we went to find Sophia together. Kiera took us to Sophia's fave places, but she was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, I remembered the picture carefully inserted inside her wallet. This must be a special place for her. This is my family's old house. We used to live here when I was little. We rushed over there and found Sophia sitting idly in front of the house. The two of them ran into each other's arms and sobbed like two children. Through tears, they talked it all out. Turns out, while Kiera was jealous of her sister, Sophia didn't have it any better either. She has been pressured by their parents' expectations since forever, and she did always feel sorry for Kiera because of all the privileges she had. You know, you can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. If singing is your passion, feel free to live it to the fullest. But if it's not, don't be afraid to pursue what makes you happy. I mean, you're actually a really awesome dancer. So in the end, Sophia and Kiera made up. After a big fight with their parents, the two sisters were free to pursue their own passion. Kiera focused on dancing, while Sophia and her friends formed an indie band like she always wanted. As for me, well, 
I've learned a lesson that if you find a lost item, take it to the cop station immediately. Luckily for me, it hasn't turned out so bad. I helped two sisters find peace and even got myself this handsome, super talented musician. Hey, I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny at all. Especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won the voice kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. The one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image! I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do, but just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest. People would be, look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> the name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me, and now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. Oh right, let's check out my new video. Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame. Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends. It's only been 10 hours, but look at this. There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. Yay! Let's see. Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring, but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat. Please reply to my comment. What on earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content. It's all about Olivia. Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison! Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark, please. Shut up! Just wait! One day y'all gonna become my fans too. Finally, what a long day! But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now. I was struggling to set up my camera when mom opened the door and peeked in. You started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of. That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it, the moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. <sighs> okay, three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face, a stranger, not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello, but who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. 
The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel, are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring! If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place. This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to. Buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> what a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped, and you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah, blah, blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right! My old neighbor Dylan! His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison. The best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> she was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me. So I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me. Suddenly a big looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh god, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room, but it's okay. We can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time, and a week later we became an item. Fast, yes, but when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange, but why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia, but Gigi, Bella, Lily Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them, but no way can Replica compete with the original. Still, isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> so did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? I rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. More? I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? 
What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm gonna be late for my appointment. Look, my face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? But I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me! And her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing! Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside, why I absolutely needed plastic surgery, why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear up my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me. But men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through. But everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true, but the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes.
Let me tell you something. Something really important. I have acrophobia, so this is my idea of a nightmare. I don't want to be here at all. Oh, and that guy on the other side is Charlie. He's my boyfriend, but I don't actually like him like that. So you're probably wondering how I ended up here, 200 meters above the ground and about to make this terrifying leap. Well, let's just start from the beginning. Hi, I'm Luna, a 17 year old high school girl from a small town in New South Wales. Growing up, I was desperate to please my hardworking single mom. The problem was she was nearly always tired and irritable. So no matter what I said or did, it usually ended up being wrong. The most common words that came out of her mouth were, if you want me to love you, you have to be nice. I wanted her to love me more than anything else in the world, so I did everything I could to appease her. This led to the need to make everyone happy and left me with an unfathomable fear of being hated by others. If I made other people happy, then they'd like me, right? So whenever someone asked me to do their homework or cover for them on roll call, I did so without hesitation. And if there's ever an argument or awkward situation, regardless of if I'm to blame or not, I always apologize first. At 15, I moved to Sydney alone for high school. And that's when I met my roommate, Margot. She's my complete opposite, but this didn't stop us from becoming best friends. She is independent, sassy, and doesn't let anyone pressure her into doing anything she doesn't want to. Guys, if I were more like her, I would have been able to avoid a lot of trouble. Once we had a group assignment in biology, and I, by chance, teamed up with these two popular girls. The day before the deadline, they both texted me, saying they were sick, and asked me to do their parts. This was a lot of work for one person, but I didn't want to upset them, so I agreed. But then, that night, while I was scrolling through Instagram during my brief break after hours of studying, I saw them checking in at a party. What? So they lied to me so they could go out and have fun, and left me home alone to do their homework? Oh my, I just want to take this pen and throw it right at their dumb duck faces. How was that cute in any way? Ugh, but who was I kidding? I knew full well I'd never be able to tell them what I really thought of them. So I picked up the pen and continued my workload meant for three people alone. I stayed up all night and drank three cans of energy drinks, but it was just too much work for one person to finish on time. Our assignment, or should I say, my assignment, got points deducted due to late submission, which somehow made the popular girls mad. What have you done? How could you turn in the assignment late? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just that doing it all by myself was a bit too much for me. Oh, please. You had the whole day to finish it. It's all down to your poor time management. Right at that moment, Margot appeared out of nowhere and stepped between us. <laughs> if you both cared so much about your grades, then you would have helped Luna complete it. Instead of going to some stupid party, how about I report you to the teacher to cross out your names from Margot? Enough. Sorry, don't mind her. Then I quickly pulled Margot away. Apologizing to them was a ridiculous thing to do. It wasn't your fault. I, I know it's not my fault, but, but there's no point making a scene out of it, right? Fine, in that case, I'll leave you alone with all the troubles you've caused yourself. I don't care anymore. Oh, no, I I didn't mean to make Margot mad. I quickly apologized to her, told her she was my best friend in the whole world, and asked her to go for a milkshake to make up. A week later, on the day my volunteer club was selling lemonade to raise funds for a children's charity, I suddenly fell sick. Oh no, I'd been telling everyone at the club how important this event was, but now I was the one who'd be absent. How embarrassing! I needed to show them how sincere I was. I texted the club president that I was sick, but if the club really needed me, I could still try to participate. <sighs> now I can finally sleep. But who would know? Before I even had time to curl up in bed, he texted back saying how they really needed my help. So if I could come, that'd be great? Oh no, did I really have to drag my feverish self over there? Not knowing what to do, I turned to Margot for advice, but she snapped at me. If you knew you couldn't go, why suggest otherwise? People will always take advantage of you if you let them. So just make it clear that you're sick and can't participate. Then she told me how her music club had a dinner meeting tonight, yet she'd already decided she was having a relaxing pamper session tonight, so she immediately told them she was otherwise engaged. Ugh, Margo was right. If I'd done as she said in the first place, I wouldn't have had to rack my brains looking for excuses to say no without annoying anyone. Finally, I texted the club president that I was afraid of infecting everyone, so I'd better stay home. Then I fell asleep and found my worries plaguing my dreams.
The next day, I felt better. So after class, I dropped by the club's room, but I instantly felt weird vibes from everyone. Then when I asked the club president how much money we'd earned from the event, he totally blanked me. Oh no, he was obviously still mad with me for letting him down. I was lost in thoughts when suddenly someone tapped me on the shoulder. I heard you were sick. Are you feeling better now? It was Charlie, one of the club members. He told me that day I was off sick. He voluntarily took over all of my work. So I invited him out for a thank you dinner right away. Hmm, maybe he misunderstood my goodwill jester, as after that he bombarded me with texts, calls, and soppy memes. Then one day while we were walking together, Charlie suddenly stopped and took my hand. Luna, we've known each other for a while now. I think it's time for me to confess my feelings. I, I like you. Will you go out with me? Oh my. What did he just say? I stood there dumbfounded. I mean, I liked him as a friend, but not romantically. But when I met his expectant gaze, my conscience began to torment me. He was such a nice guy, so how could I say no to him? In the end, I, I forced a smile and nodded in agreement. My feelings for him will develop over time, right? But unfortunately, the answer to this was no. <laughs> Actually, since we started dating, I found myself liking him even less than before. He does a lot of things that irritate me, such as the time he insisted we wear couple outfits to school. Yeah, slogan shirts with he's mine, she's mine printed on them should definitely be left in 2010. Ugh. He smugly ushered me around the school and seemed oblivious to the laughs and points in our direction. If only the ground could just open up and swallow me right away. That evening, noticing how fed up I looked, Marco asked me if everything was going all right between me and Charlie. So I told her everything. I thought she'd get mad at me again, but to my surprise, she just sighed and told me to tell the truth and break up with Charlie before things got too serious. That's the best way to stop both of us from getting hurt. And also, I've heard a lot of bad things about Charlie. People say he's kinda erratic. You better get this over with as soon as possible. Yeah, Margot's right. Next time I saw Charlie, I was ending this once and for all. Turns out I didn't have to wait long, because that Sunday afternoon, Charlie came to pick me up for our date. He told me he had a surprise in store for me, and I was gonna love it. Okay, it sounds like he'd gone to loads of effort, so it was probably best if I left breaking up with him until the journey home. Almost there! Hearing what Charlie said, I looked out the window and- Oh my god! Is that a bungee jumping spot? So, long story short, here I am, 200 meters off the ground, my legs trembling like a leaf and my heart thudding like crazy. I was about to cry out of fear when suddenly I heard romantic music playing behind me. I turned around to see Charlie getting down on one knee. Behind him was eagle-eyed staff holding roses and candles while swaying to the music. Um, what's happening? I know we haven't been dating long, but it's clear that we're made for each other. Luna, will you marry me? What? Did I hear him wrong? I mean, I'm only 17. Seeing my puzzled look, Charlie hurriedly said, I know we're still in high school, but don't worry, we can wait till graduation. Then let's have the most wonderful wedding straight after that. This was insane. I stood there, rooted to the floor, not knowing what to do, and seeing everyone watching and waiting made me feel even more pressured. I was trying to figure all this out when Charlie forced the ring on my finger. Oh my God. What should I do? What should I do? Well, in classic me fashion, I didn't do anything. My stupid hand just froze in place. And in the end, it turned out like this. No, no, I, I couldn't let this happen. Charlie, actually, I, I, um, I don't have feelings for you. I, I was going to tell you today, but I, I didn't expect things to end up like this. You're kidding me, right? If you didn't like me, you wouldn't have let me put the ring on earlier. So I explained everything to Charlie, his face darkened with disappointment. I felt so guilty. I should have just been straight with him from the beginning, then none of this would have happened. We can still be friends, can't we? I asked, but Charlie replied without even looking at me. If you don't like me, then why give me hope? Why the emotionless tone? It felt like he'd turned into a completely different person. Af afraid, I, I kept quiet not daring to blurt out so much as a word. I'd be home soon and away from this suffocating atmosphere. But as Charlie drove, I noticed how the surroundings became stranger and stranger. This is definitely not the way to the dormitory. Finally, the car stopped at an abandoned construction site. Luna, get out of the car. Sensing his irritable tone, I did as he said. You can stay here until you've figured out that we're destined for each other. Then call me. 
I watched in horror as he drove away and left me there. I was all alone, in the middle of nowhere. Panicked, I called Margot for help, but as soon as she picked up, my phone ran out of power. I explored the area, but it was completely deserted. Would I be stuck here forever without anyone knowing? It was getting late, I'd barely eaten or drank anything all day, and this felt hopeless. I burst into tears, and then everything fell dark around me. I woke up to the bright lights of the hospital. Margot jumped in to give me a hug, then explained what had happened. Turns out that night after I called her, she checked my location on Snapchat and saw that I was in some deserted place. Sensing something was off, Margot and the dormitory manager went to find me and took me to the hospital. Charlie was disciplined and detained for a month for the trouble he'd caused. After that horrible experience, I talked a lot with Margot. She comforted me, encouraged me, and said that it seemed like my desire to please others stemmed from childhood trauma. Perhaps it was my mother's words. If you want me to love you, you have to be nice. That created the character I have now. I couldn't continue to let the past consume me. That summer, when I returned home to see my mom, together, we poured out our feelings and faced our problems. I finally figured out that being nice to people wasn't a bad thing, but agreeing to things just to avoid disappointing people isn't the correct thing to do at all. Now, with Margot's help, I'm step by step learning to say no to things I don't want to do, because life's way too short to say yes to everything, don't you think? Did this fence have to be so high? Oh no, that didn't sound good. It was time to get out of here. But, ah! Uh, I seem to be stuck. Suddenly, a security team was blinding me with a flashlight and telling me not to move. Not that I could anyway. <sighs> they dragged me down. Then the next thing I knew, I was being pushed into a chair and interrogated by security guards. But all they got out of me was silence. A few minutes later, Mr. and Mrs. Langston showed up. Yeah, they're the wealthy couple who owns this mansion. They're the people that I was looking for. I suppose I did owe them an explanation. I'm sorry for this disturbance, but it's not what you think. I saw your job advert for a housemaid, and I wanted to apply. But the guard said I was too young and refused to let me in. The thing is... My dad has a rare heart condition, and if he doesn't receive treatment soon, then chances are he won't make it. I really don't have any other choice. So please can I have the job and also six months salary advance? Right at that moment, a girl my age fell into the room, peered at the Langstons, then started laughing. Carla, this is not acceptable. Aren't you ashamed of your appalling results for the Francis Academy entrance exam? You should be studying hard to redeem yourself, not out partying at this hour. This Carla girl just rolled her eyes at them, then wobbly walked off. I noticed Mr. Langston comforting his wife, who seemed to be in much distress at the girl's inconsiderate behaviors. So this must be their daughter then. They sure seem to take her education seriously and she applied to my school. Hmm, that gave me an idea. You know, if you want to improve Carla's academic performance, I can help you. They both gave me skeptical looks, so I showed them my academic records and told them how I was a valedictorian and had successfully scored a scholarship at Francis Academy. On hearing about my achievements, any apprehensions they had soon faded. And so, they'd come up with a plan. A risky one. They would pay for my dad's hospital fees until he fully recuperated if I took on the identity of Carla and flew to South Korea to study at an international high school there, while Carla would take my place and enroll at Francis Academy just as they wished. This deal sounded like the answer to my prayers, but I knew it would be tricky. Pretending to be somebody else in a completely different country was beyond my understanding, so I agreed to do it, but only on two more conditions. First, a guardian must be present, who would take care of all my paperwork and stuff. Second, after I completed the deal and returned, 
the Langstons had to help me get into my dream school. The prestigious GBA University, obviously. They gave it a thought, then shook my hand in agreement. It looked like we had a deal! The next thing I knew, I was in an elite neighborhood in Seoul, Korea. Whoa! Talk about luxury! So this was what it felt like to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Mr. Preston dropped me off at school and repeatedly told me not to draw attention to myself. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, Mr. Preston is the Langston's lawyer, and according to the contract, he's also my guardian. He seems oh so serious, but I guess he's okay. Whoa, this school looked so modern, the architecture was a work of art all in itself. I wandered around the endless corridors and tried to find my class. Everyone seemed quite friendly, and the class president, Minjun, even gave me a guided tour. All the students' outstanding paintings, photos, and models were displayed all across the campus. Countless classrooms of different subjects, from science to art, just made me gasp in awe. I was admiring the artwork, when suddenly Minjin blurted out, Sorry, I've got to go. Miss Lee is looking for me. It'll only take a few minutes, so wait here for me, okay? Then he rushed off, so I lingered around the hall. That's when I spotted a group of girls nearby. I recognized the one from my last class. I'm sure her name was Isabella. I was about to walk over to greet them when I realized they had this one girl cornered and were making fun of her hairband. Ugh! Where did you get that horrid thing from? I suppose it must have come from some thrift shop or something. I heard that's where poor people shop. <laughs> Ugh, this whole thing disgusted me. They outcasted someone just because she didn't come from ridiculously rich households like them. Ugh, I knew that poor girl's feeling all too well. I gotta help her. But I didn't want to get anyone's back up and draw attention to myself. Hmm, what could I do? Ah, got it. Hey, the teacher's coming. I'll stall her for you guys. Run! My plan worked a treat, as Isabella and her friends nodded at me, then rushed off. I then went over to the girl asking if she was okay. Get away from me! She flinched me off her, and then ran off. Huh? I was only trying to help. As I turned around, I saw Minjin looking at me. A bit impressed, I think. He told me that the students here were divided into two groups. 90% are rich and the remaining 10% are poor kids entering under scholarships. Most of the students are quite friendly to each other. Well, except those I just witnessed. Isabella's part of the rich kid group who think their upbringings make them superior to others. She's often mean to the 10% group as she believes they don't deserve to be here. And as you can guess, that girl they upset? She's called Susie. She's in the 10% group, and she's the smartest student in our year. What nonsense! School is school! We're here to study and should all be treated equally! Too right, new girl. I knew there was something different about you. The next day, when class was over, Isabella tapped on my shoulder and thanked me for the warning. Then she asked me to join her group for lunch. I was about to politely refuse when Minjin appeared and asked me to join him. Phew! Thanks to Minjin, I had an excuse to quickly flee the scene. However, I did look back and see that Isabella was giving this offended look. After that, Minjin and I started hanging out more. We soon became close friends, and we both decided that the dynamics around here needed to change. So, we set out to help the 10% Club. One lunchtime, Isabella and her clan purposely bumped into this boy, causing him to spill food all over himself. While they laughed and pointed at him, I rushed over there took the food, and slammed it onto Minjin's face. Minjin immediately understood my intention. Then he also took a handful of noodles and smeared it all over Isabella. Cue the canteen erupting into one big, messy food fight. <laughs> Another time, the school was preparing for a cultural fair. One boy from the 10% group had this awesome idea to open a food stall serving traditional dishes from different countries. Everyone agreed, apart from, yep, you guessed it, Isabella and her snooty besties. Such a peasant. 
too used to working as a waiter to serve others, huh? I winked at Minjin. Then we stayed behind and secretly wrote Isabella and her friends' names on the list of participants and submitted it to the teacher. Now, they had no choice but to serve food at the super crowded fair. The funniest part was they finally got a taste of their own medicine when the 10% group made the most of ordering them around and complaining. Ew, this ratatouille is too bland. Add some more salt. And this milk tea is too sweet. Start a new batch with less sugar. I have to admit, I was enjoying watching the mean kids squirm, but I guess my enjoyment hadn't gone unnoticed, as afterward, Isabella approached me. Those peasant kids aren't at the same level as you and I. I suggest you put more care into who you choose to associate with, or you could end up being treated like they are. Whatever. I just rolled my eyes, walked away from her, then continued to hang out with my friends in the 10% group. Isabella and her minions gave me dirty looks, but due to the Langston's name and fortune, that's all they could do. Just like that, my high school years passed by. I had some great friends. And guess what? Yep, I was now dating Minjin. I loved being here in South Korea, and I'd even grown fond of Preston, who despite being a grumpy gut, now felt like family to me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I missed my family back home like crazy. But Dad was getting better now, and we regularly FaceTimed. As amazing as my life was now, deep down I always felt like I was living in a dream. None of this truly belonged to me, and everything would be over as soon as I left this place. And eventually, my last week here arrived. As I was studying for my last ever exam, the SAT, I received a message from an unknown number. I know your secret. Drop out of the test, else I'll expose you. What? Who could it be? I called the number and a distorted voice answered the phone. I begged them to tell me why they were doing this, but they just replied, You don't need to know. Just do as I said. Then they hung up. Luckily for me, Preston isn't just an amazing lawyer, he's also a tech genius. Thanks to him, we tracked down the location of the phone. Hmm. I bet you're just as curious as I am to find out who it was. And now was the moment of truth. Huh? No way! Standing there looking startled was... Susie! Why would she do this to me? It made no sense. I mean, I know we weren't friends, but I had nothing against her. Why did she despise me to the point of willing to ruin my life like this? Please let me explain. Ever since you arrived here, I lost my top spot at school, which means I've also lost a full scholarship to college. My family will never be able to afford it themselves, so I decided to investigate you. And that's when I found out that you were not the real Carla Langston, and you got paid by her parents to achieve all these academic records for her. I get why you're upset, but you didn't have to blackmail me. You don't strike me as someone who would do such a thing, so it's kind of disappointing that you did. I'm not. I... I'm a dead end, Irene. You have to understand. This is my entire future I'm losing here. And what for? So some rich, spoiled girl can get into college without doing any of the work? <sighs> it seemed like I had a lot of thinking to do. In the end... I realized all I felt towards Susie was pity. This was all my fault, and it wasn't fair for someone as capable as Susie to have her entire future ruined because of me. So, I had to be the bigger person here. I decided to ask the Langstons to give Susie the spot at GBA University, which was previously reserved for me as part of the deal. I mean, no worries. With this big brain, I could easily get in there on my own, right? And so, as soon as I was done with the test, I quietly left South Korea behind, without saying goodbye to anyone, including Minjin. Susie and I boarded the same flight back to the state. She couldn't help but thank me all the way there. And, well, let's just say, by the time the plane landed, we became good friends. But things didn't all go as swimmingly as I intended. It turned out Carla was even more negligent than first thought. All she managed to get was a high school diploma with shockingly bad grades. These were now my bad grades. 
My dream of attending a prestigious university was over. <sighs> I just have to make do with a community college instead. A year flew by, and there wasn't a single day that I didn't think about South Korea or Minjin. I couldn't talk to him anymore. I promised the Langstons I'd cut all ties with my life there. I mean, Susie was the exception. One day while going out with Susie, she was showing me something interesting on Facebook. When we happened to scroll past a post of Minjin's, which read, Finally I found you, the love of my life. My heart sank. Wow, it looked like he'd found someone else, while my heart still pined for him. <sighs> but life still goes on, and a week after that, I was waiting for Susie outside of her college, daydreaming how this could have been my life. I saw a familiar face heading towards me. Was that... Minjin? But wait! He was with a girl. Carla! Hang on, his Facebook post was about her? The love of his life was Carla? I couldn't do this right now, so I willed back tears as I took a deep breath and turned to walk away. But suddenly, I felt a hand pull me back. It was Minjin. It's really you! I finally found you! I've been looking ever since graduation, and then my information led me here and to... Me! Carla appeared next to him and smirked at me. Hey, who am I to stop the course of true love? So I told him your real name and helped him search for you. I mean, you're smart, so I figured you'd attend this university too. No, you messed up my grades, remember? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. I turned and looked at Minjin. I'm so sorry, Minjin. I wanted to tell you everything, but I couldn't. He took my hand in his and gave me this adoring smile. I found you. And trust me, right now, that's all that matters. I stand here before you, looking back fondly on the four years of legacy we've all made together. Do you see her? The girl in the graduation gown giving that awesome speech? Well, that was me, Taylor Flores. Take a look at my parents. They looked so proud of me. Oh, but I will never forget this face. This is Jonas, my arch enemy. We were the top two students in our school and had been competing against each other since forever. But too bad, Jonas, you lost the final battle because I was the one asked to give the graduation speech, not you. It's safe to say that I had it all figured out after high school. First, I would move to New York to attend the most prestigious college in the city, majoring in English, of course. Then when I graduated from college, I'd write my first novel, then publish it to acclamation and glory. Now, that's what I call a perfect plan. <laughs> Just wait for it. You will see my face on thousands of book covers. Taylor Flores' time has come. I want those pages by the end of Friday, else be prepared for a pay cut this month. Ugh! I hate deadlines! As you can see, my life didn't exactly turn out as I planned. What went wrong, you ask? Well, after I graduated from college, I pursued my writing dream, but every agent and publisher I sent my novel to rejected it. I kept pushing myself to write more, but then I ended up having writer's block. I couldn't create stories anymore, so I decided to switch to writing for newspapers. I used to think that if I had to write for a newspaper, then it'd at least be a famous one. But life is not a fairy tale. On the contrary, it's actually cruel and unfair. Well. At least it was to me, because my preferred newspaper rejected me a bunch of times. So now I ended up here, working for this unknown news website with an all-time grumpy manager. <sighs> okay, so back to what was happening at the office. Suddenly, my phone buzzed through an email. Oh no, it's an invitation to my high school reunion. No way I could go back to my hometown and see everyone. They'd all see what a loser I'd become and I'd be the joke of the party. All the worst case scenarios were running through my mind until a call from Amelia came. It's my bestie from high school. 
She asked me if I was going, and I told her never in a million years. If you don't go, then everybody will assume that you failed in life and you're too ashamed to go. So the best thing you can do is to attend and keep your head up high. Man, Amelia really had a point and was great at persuading other people. No wonder she's now a lawyer. Ugh. So here I was, in front of the venue, feeling so nervous that I thought I may throw up. But it's now or never, right? I just needed to put my game face on. I entered the room to a load of unfamiliar faces. Huh? Was I in the wrong place? I was about to leave when I suddenly bumped into somebody and fell on the floor. Ouch. I looked up. It was a chubby lady who was holding her baby in one arm and gripping a toddler's hand with the other. I instantly apologized. I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't hurt the kids. Oh, it's fine. You're lucky my belly was big enough to block you. <laughs> she then paused and took a closer look at me. Is that you, Taylor? You look great. Let's get inside. The party just started. Wait, she knew me. But who was she? I guess she did look familiar. Maybe I should wait for Amelia and ask her, as she had kept in touch with most of our classmates. I looked around, trying to find someone familiar to have a chat with, but my gosh, why was it so hard? But then I saw a woman who had beautiful, long, blonde hair, and I instantly knew who it was. Jessica, the hottest and most popular girl in high school, and the captain of the cheerleader team. I walked over to her, and we began to catch up. We chatted a lot, and she was so funny. Hmm, I don't remember her being so hilarious. My god, you're so funny, Jess. Hey, Jessica! I heard Amelia shout. I looked over at her, and she was walking towards someone else. It was the chubby lady from earlier. So, she's Jessica? Oh my, she definitely changed a lot. But if that was Jessica, then... Who was this? Thank God I didn't say her name earlier. I excused myself from this mystery person, then whispered to Amelia, asking who the lady was I was talking to. Beats me. Why don't we ask her directly? She then did exactly just that. The lady gave us a playful smile, saying, Try guessing. Are you Ashley? Nope. Natasha? Wrong. Tiffany? Negative. Wait. Are you related to Jack Miller? You kind of look like him. Almost correct. Oh my, she wasn't related to Jack Miller because she is Jack Miller. Well, now she's Jill Miller. Turns out she never felt comfortable being a boy. So after high school, she underwent transgender surgery. Wow, that's incredible. I kind of felt overwhelmed. So I went to the bathroom to freshen up. On my way out, I saw a familiar face. It was Luke the most handsome guy in high school. He was picking up trash and putting it in the garbage can. Aw, what a nice guy. We talked for a bit and, oh, turns out he works here as the janitor. He was the one who recommended organizing the reunion here and he was cleaning up as much as possible so later it wouldn't take him so much time. For real? Who would have expected that? I went back to the party and saw Amelia talking to a guy. Oh. Who is this handsome dude? Amelia beckoned me over and introduced him to me. I couldn't believe my ears. It was Jonas, my arch enemy. The chubby dwarf Jonas with a face full of pimples now resembled an Abercrombie and Fitch model. Jonas just told me that he's been promoted to a higher position in his company. Ugh, seemed like he still kept his bragging habit. Some things never changed. Suddenly, Jonas asked me, what about you, Taylor? How has it been going for you lately? Oh, snap! I couldn't tell him that I was working for this awful news website. That would be so humiliating. So, thinking fast, I blurted out that I was a managing editor for this huge newspaper in New York. Jonas and Amelia looked at me in shock. In your face, Jonas. If I had a mic, I would definitely drop it. <laughs> I asked Jonas what position he was promoted to, and he replied, Oh, I, um, got chief technical officer. Ha, huh, nice try, but it was no match for my amazing <laughs> job. I won that battle, loser.
Well, in general, the reunion went pretty well, even though I had to lie about myself, but whatever. It's not like I was gonna see Jonas again, right? Wrong. A week later, I received a Facebook friend request from him. First, I ignored it, but then a few days later, he texted me via messenger, asking why I didn't accept him on Facebook. Ugh, that was so annoying. Fine, but first I had to readjust my page. I needed to hide photos, statuses, and tags that were related to my company. Done. Then Jonas began to text me. It was nice seeing you the other day. Would you like dinner sometime? Um, I'm sorry, what? Was he asking me out on a date? Or was this a prank? Because I live in New York. I told him that, and, oh my god, he lives in New York too. Ugh, great. But the thing is, I told him last time that I'm an editing manager, and that's a busy job. So during our date, I asked Amelia to pretend to be my secretary and call me a bunch of times during dinner. However, before we could play our act, Jonas was the one who received a dozen calls and then had to leave early because of an incident at his company. After that, he texted me quite a lot, but still feeling bitter from being ditched at dinner the other day, I only replied to him after 30 minutes. Every time. But on days when he didn't text me, I found myself staring at my phone longing to hear from him. Jesus, I was falling for him? Jonas? Why Jonas? I couldn't understand myself anymore and was unable to stop my feelings. So when he told me he liked me, I said I liked him too. And soon we became a couple. It was great at first, but then Jonas insisted that he drive me to work and pick me up. Oh no, I refused, of course but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Ugh. So when Jonas dropped me at the fake office, I had to run. No, I had to sprint five blocks to my real office to make it on time. And then in the evening, I had to leave 30 minutes earlier to run back to the other office and wait for him to pick me up. The first three times, I could handle it. But Jonas wanted to drive me to work every day. That's enough. I needed a break from all this running. Eventually, I came up with an excuse. I bought a bike and told him that I wanted to ride to work, as it would be good for my health. Oof. I didn't have time to run five blocks each day anymore, because I had an important interview to prepare for. Oh yeah, I was applying to my dream newspaper. Again, if I did get in, I don't need to lie to Jonas anymore. And luckily, my interview went pretty well. I had a smile on my face as I walked over to the elevator. First it was just me, and then a bunch of employees went in. The elevator was about to close, when suddenly, from the outside, someone put his hand between the doors. Please wait! And that's when I saw a familiar face. Jonas! Our eyes met, and we both looked shocked. Then one of the employees said to him, Hey boss, I already finished the report, and will send it to you this evening. What? Why did the guy say that to him? When the elevator reached the ground floor, I quickly ran out of it. Jonas ran after me, held my hand, and said, Wait, let me explain. What is there to explain? We both lied to each other. Jonas held me in his arms and tried to keep me calm. Then he began telling me everything. Oh my god. Turns out he's the actual editing manager of this newspaper. Ugh! Well, that explains a lot. I should have known he didn't work in technology, as I once asked him to repair my laptop, and he ended up locking himself out of it. Hearing you say you had my job shocked me. I didn't want to embarrass you, so I made up another position. So he knew right from the beginning I was lying. Then why did you insist on driving me to work, when you already knew I didn't work there? <laughs> I was just messing with you. Besides... I was kind of curious to see how long you could keep the lie up for. I'm sorry. But the truth is, I like you. I have liked you since high school. Back then, I was always competing with you because I wanted you to notice me. I thought I was about to throw a tantrum, but thinking back, it was all my fault. If I hadn't lied in the first place, then Jonas wouldn't have had to lie about himself. Right at that moment, I received an email from Human Resources. Oh god, I got in! 
They were so impressed by me that they had to email me right away. I was so happy that I hugged Jonas as he said, Congratulations, newbie. Now, let's get to work. Your first task is to go out on dinner with me. Yeah, so now Jonas and I work at the same place, and he's my boss. I used to hate losing to him, but now that he's my boyfriend, I feel fine. Actually, I'm really proud of him. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Flora, Portside High School cheerleading captain and beauty pageant queen. My natural beauty and charisma mean that everyone's drawn to me, but hey, I don't make it easy for them. I only allow a select few to get close to me as I can't be seen associating with just anyone. Only my classmate Nina is pretty enough to have the coveted position of my BFF. Birds of a feather flock together, right? My high school life was perfect. But then, in the space of one day, that all changed. The principal, Mrs. Harrington, told me that due to my cheerleading abilities, I'd won a scholarship to the ACL Academy, a boarding school for the athletically gifted. And I was leaving today! Huh? This made no sense! I mean, I don't even do sports! I rushed straight home to discuss it with my mom and found her sitting on the couch surrounded by a load of shopping bags. Yep, she'd already spent the scholarship money before I'd even found out the news. I know mom loves money, but how could she make such a huge decision about my life without discussing it with me first? Ugh, looks like I had no choice but to leave Portside High behind and go to this stupid sports school. Whatever. I'm a skilled cheerleader after all. It'd be a breeze, right? Wrong. This new school sucked. On my very first day here, I was woken up at 6 a.m. and forced to run five laps around the stadium. God, are these people superheroes or what? How are they able to run and laugh at the same time while I'm panting like crazy? I didn't have time to catch my breath when the teacher made us move to the gym to lift weights. After three hours in the hellish gym, I barely had time to digest my lunch before they steered me into the volleyball court. Yep, that's the sport mom had registered me for. Ugh, this stupid sport! Finally, nighttime arrived, and I managed to crawl my aching body back to my dorm. God save me from this living nightmare! Suddenly, the door opened, and in stepped my three roomies, aka my volleyball teammates. Honestly, I don't even know if I could call them girls or not. One has super short cropped bangs, one doesn't say much and shuffles more than walks and one wears clothes so baggy they resemble a tent. Obviously, I'm way out of their league. And you know what they all have in common? They're always sweaty. So gross. Come to think of it, I have to go take a shower ASAP. Otherwise, I might turn into one of them. Fresh out of the shower, I called Nina and blurted out how exhausted I was and how much I missed our school. Who are you? You must be so tired. Oh, by the way, I have some amazing news to tell you. There's a city beauty pageant coming up and I'm representing the school. What? But I won the school beauty contest. Yeah, you did. But you don't attend Portside High anymore, so seeing as I came second, they've given me the spot. Too bad, as you definitely would have won. What? How unfair. I was still in shock when the dorm supervisor stormed in and took away my phone. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. This school even has a strict 10 p.m. phones away and lights off rule. It's all because they believe health is the most precious thing for an athlete. I tossed and turned all night. This beauty pageant was massive, and there's no way I could miss it. But I'm not at Portside High anymore. Instead, I'm stuck in this dumb jock academy. Hmm... If only I could get out of here. Huh, that's right. I have a brilliant idea. I need to get expelled. So, I decided to skip practice and go cause some havoc for three days straight. I poured paint into the pool, cut off the badminton strings, deflated all of the soccer balls, and of course, I made sure that the security cameras caught it all. And as expected, the principal eventually called me into his office. Yes. This was the moment I was waiting for. Soon I could pack and get out of here. Only the rest didn't exactly go to plan. If it had not been for Mrs. Harrington. Two laps of frog jumps around the soccer field. Now, 
What? Frog jumps? I hate those things! Why couldn't he just kick me out already? But wait, what does Mrs. Harrington have to do with this? After my punishment, I needed to vent. So, hugging my aching thighs, I called Nina to complain about my failed plan. And she just burst out laughing. <laughs> oh, Flora, those outdated tricks were never gonna work. You have to do something bold, like... <gasps> oh my god, Nina is a genius! The next night, following Nina's instructions, I sneaked out when everyone was asleep. That's right, I'm going to wake the whole school up with these firecrackers. I lit one in the dorm's backyard, then ran to hide behind the bushes. Three, two, one, and silence. Huh? I went back to check and saw that it had gone out. What's wrong? Is this one broken? I tried again and again, but the same thing happened each time. As if a ghost did it? Just the thought of it sent chills down my spine, so I sprinted right back to my room. Okay, so not only had my plan been a massive fail, but it had left me super tired. Needless to say, this morning's run was not fun. Zombie alert! Hmm, how come they look even more exhausted than me? Hey, have you guys heard about the doomed jock? He's the ghost in the dorm's backyard. Allegedly, he attended this academy years ago, and he exercised himself to death right there in the dorm's backyard. So now, he haunts it. What was she talking about? Could it be the one who messed with me yesterday? Was the doomed jock? I couldn't just give up like that. I needed to figure out a way to get out of this awful place before this ghost got me. Hmm, how about starting a fight? I heard that the fencing team and basketball team were the two toughest groups in the school. So, I sprayed paint on their fencing masks and punctured all of the basketballs and left a fencing sword at the scene. Then I wrote both teams an anonymous letter. Sunday, 2 p.m., abandoned building near the back gate. When Sunday came, I hid in the abandoned house and waited for the two groups to arrive. Look at their tense faces. This was going to be fun. I quickly called the cops and then took advantage of the chaos to blend in with the feuding teams. I almost got punched in the face when, fortunately, the cops got there just in time, causing everyone to frantically flee the scene. I happily ran to a cop. It's me! I started this fight. But, to my surprise, the cop just asked if I was hurt. Then he hurriedly chased after the gang. Only then I realized that if I wanted to be caught, I had to do exactly what they did. Run away! Oh, man. I was staggering my way back to the dormitory, feeling deflated, when I spotted the fencing and basketball teams coming my way. Freaked out, I looked around for a place to hide, but there was only one car parked on the side of the road. With no other way, I ventured to open the car door and, oh, it wasn't locked. I quickly jumped in, hid under the back seat, and lay completely still. At that moment, the car door swung open. I closed my eyes and braced myself to catch some hands, when suddenly the car revved up and left. Looking up, I saw the principal sitting in the driver's seat, whistling happily. Oh, so it was his car. After a while, the car stopped in front of a bar in town. Didn't expect a serious man like him to go to such places. But wait, an underage student being caught by the principal here would surely get me expelled, right? With that in mind, I hurriedly followed him. But at the door, a security guard stopped me and asked for my ID card. I had no idea what to do when suddenly a strange guy appeared. Hey cutie, need an ID card? How about this? I'll lend you a fake ID to get in. In exchange, you must go out with me tonight. Sounds good, huh? Well, I didn't plan on sticking around for long, as I would just get in, find the principal, and get caught right away anyway. So I nodded in agreement. I was about to take the ID card from him when someone yanked me back and pushed me into a cab. My roommates! What are you doing here? Do you know you've just ruined my plan and- Ruined? Who's the one causing trouble here? Do you honestly believe that if you get expelled like that, your old school will take you back? <sighs> Fat chance. Huh? How'd you know that I'm trying to get expelled? Turns out my roommates overheard the conversation between me and Nina. It was them who extinguished my firecrackers in the campus backyard, then made up the doomed jock ghost story to make me stay away from there. 
Then, when the basketball and fencing team searched for me, it was them who lied that I was with them all day so I could get away with it. But what did you do that for? Don't get us wrong, we didn't do it for you. We did it to protect the school's reputation. Then they started telling me that, for the last few years, due to bad achievements, our school was on the chopping block to make space for industrial areas. The only way to convince the city council to keep our school was by winning the state's upcoming sports competition. We've all played sports for all of our lives. Sport is everything to us. If our school closes, we don't know where we'd go. That's why when we saw you being lazy and messing about, we couldn't just sit back and watch. Oh, I had no idea about this. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. I mean, of course I don't want to ruin their futures. I then also opened up to them and told them all about the beauty pageant. They insisted there must be a way to join the pageant without returning to my old school. So they searched around on Google, and guess what? Turns out the pageant accepts free candidates too, which means no school registration needed. What else could I wish for? I immediately signed up for it, and as a thank you to my new friends, I started making an effort at playing volleyball. I'm a tall girl, so my training position is a right side hitter. And you know what? There is this satisfaction whenever I was able to block a ball. Not gonna lie, this is much more interesting than I thought. That weekend, I went to the city to pick out some dresses for the beauty contest. I found myself immersed in racks of gorgeous gowns when a familiar voice startled me. How about this one, Mom? Stunning, sweetie. You're the most beautiful girl in this world. I don't know what possessed them to pick Flora over you, but no need to worry this time as I have sent her far away. Yeah, that's where she belongs. I'll show them who's the true beauty queen now. What? No way! My old school principal is Nina's mom? And transferring me to the sports academy was part of her plan? Just so her daughter could go to the pageant? I was fuming. So as soon as Mrs. Harrington went outside to take a call, I walked straight over to confront Nina. I can't believe you're like that. Nina looked shocked at first, but then smirked as she said, Like what? Like someone who's far prettier, more talented, and crown-worthy than you? Thanks, sporty girl. I shoved past her and stormed out of there. Wait for it, Nina. We'll soon see who the real winner is. The next few weeks were crazy busy with volleyball practice and the pageant preparations. I may have only been a reserve, but I still wanted to give it my all to motivate the team. The sports competition soon arrived, and after two days of competing, the fate of the school came down to the final match, our volleyball game. Talk about intense. It sucked it was on the same day as the beauty pageant, as I would have loved to be able to cheer them on from the player bench. But then, disaster struck. The girl who plays right side hitter sprained her wrist and couldn't play. The whole team looked so worried, and that made my heart ache. There was only one thing for it. I'd replace her. If I was quick, I could still make it to the beauty pageant afterward. Come on, Flora. Stay focused. Just one point left, and we'd win. Suddenly, the ball came flying at me. This was it. I hit it with all my might and... Score! We won! I was busy celebrating our victory when everyone suddenly asked me about the beauty pageant. Oh my god, I almost forgot. The match went on longer than I thought it would. My friends dragged me into the taxi, but when we got there, the show was already coming to an end. And worst of all, guess who was standing there wearing the winner's crown and looking all smug? Yep, Nina. Did you come to congratulate me? Thanks, bestie. Oh, you guys must be Flora's new friends. Hmm, that figures. How cute. Stop the act, Nina. Yes, they are my friends. They're not fake, and they're a thousand times more interesting than you. <laughs> Say whatever you want, but I'm a beauty queen now, and you're no longer at the same level as me. My friends started clenching their fists, so I quickly pulled them away before anything happened. Right at that time, an announcement came across the speaker. Attention, pageants. We've just discovered signs of voter fraud. Please stay inside the hall and await further confirmation. About 30 minutes later, the truth finally came out. Turns out, Nina's mom had paid for the voting texts. Needless to say, Nina had her crown taken off her immediately, and Mrs. Harrington also lost her principal job. 
<laughs> what goes around comes around, right? As for me, I'm not bothered about beauty pageants anymore. Instead, I have a new hobby, volleyball. Turns out I'm pretty good at it, and who knows, I might even become a professional player? And you know what the best part of all this is? I now have true friends by my side who I know will be willing to help me anytime and anywhere. Hey there, I'm Evie from Georgia. So I look like a regular teenage girl, right? <laughs> Just you wait till you see what I can do. Kids these days are so rude and unruly. I blame the parents. There's just no discipline anymore. See, they don't even respect their principal. But no big deal. I know just how to handle them. There we go. Just a few words and the class immediately went silent. What is this, Mrs. Gardner? That trip was all we've been looking forward to for months. Thanks to everyone's disruptive behavior. Well, to be exact, thanks to the actions of you, 25 out of 300 students, no one has anything to look forward to this year. Okay, then go on, ma'am. Punish us. But why drag the whole year group into this? Other classes will definitely not leave us alone after this. Nobody likes being punished. That's why it works. Now... Let's see what your peers make of this, shall we? The whole class was buzzing with, it's so unfair, abuse of power, wicked witch. Oh my, these kids, always full of energy. Go back to your seats and write an apology letter to Miss Helen, along with a promise to never misbehave again, or else. All of them reluctantly sat down. And there we have it. Oh my god, who are you? I, I, um, it's just that these unruly students need to learn a lesson for getting Mrs. Helen so exhausted that she ended up in the hospital. And so you just decided to mimic me. Well then, please inform your mum. We will have a talk about this. Here, tomorrow morning. I glumly walked home as slowly as possible. As soon as I walked through the door, Mom was glaring at me. Yep, my mom is Miss Helen, the kindest homeroom teacher ever. However, the kids in her class made her life a misery, which led mom to get high blood pressure and end up in the hospital. I just wanted to help her, but instead, I just managed to make things worse. <sighs> Hi, mom. I'm sorry, but I don't regret what I did. Mom started lecturing me about how it was bad enough that Dad had left and her students were rebellious without me acting like a crazy person. Crazy person? She means the times when I copy the people I want to be? But that's my hobby. I inherited that passion from my father, a famous special effect makeup artist. The feeling whenever I successfully transform into someone else is awesome. And it also helps me feel connected to my dad even though I haven't seen him in a long time. It all started when I was 13, and Dad helped me dress up as my fave idol for the school festival. Dad taught me how to analyze the character and practice the disguise. Bold eyeliner, smoky eyes, contouring, plus the bodycon outfits. I looked like a real CL from 2NE1. My friends loved my new look. So over the next few years, I masqueraded into many different people, including Lady Gaga, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, and Sia. The feeling that my makeup talent was that admired and anticipated was just really addictive. Hey, is it Billie Eilish this time? Why not Taylor Swift? I love her so much. I've always done whatever I want and always been exactly who I am. Wow, you got that spot on. Are you a shapeshifter or something? Needless to say, once I imitated someone... I made sure I got their gestures and mannerisms just right. My talent didn't stop at awesome makeup. I was trying to collect things from my locker when a stampede of students raced past me and almost knocked me off my feet. Huh? Who was that strange and rather handsome guy they were chasing? Look at him swaggering. 
Does he think he's Donald Trump or something? That's Xander. He just transferred here. Keep your voice down, by the way. You don't want to annoy his fan base. Poof. I'm not afraid of those way too girly girls who go crazy for boys. Huh. <laughs> no one scares you, do they, Evie? Now let's go have some granola. Leo may like boring granola, but no thanks. I'm having a hamburger and fried chicken. Billie Eilish is not the type to turn down delicious food for health freak nonsense. Oh, there's that obnoxious Xander again. But this time he's all over Kayla, the snooty hot girl from my class. A boy approached me asking to take a selfie with me, then suddenly I heard a scream. What do you think you're doing? I turned to see what was going on and saw Kayla going ballistic at some poor girl who'd accidentally tripped over and fallen into Xander's lap. What on earth do you think you're doing? Take a look at yourself before trying to attract my man, ugly doofus. How snobby. Did she think her beauty was that splendid to help her keep her man? But not with that empty head, girl. After a few days of research, I showed up at school looking just like Kayla. I'd perfected everything from her blonde hair, makeup, clothes, walk, and voice. Honestly, this time I was quite nervous. Dressing up as someone I actually knew was always extra scary, especially when her friends were walking over. Wow, that dress is so chic. You really are the fashionista of our school, Kay. Come on, Xander's waiting for us on the sports field. Please, do you think I really want you around? I'm just taking advantage of you. And you, you keep following me around like a pet. It's so tragic. Are you crazy? I know you like Xander too. I see the gooey looks you give him. When I'm done with him, I'll consider giving him to you. I walked away leaving the girls freaking out. But I didn't say anything different from what Kayla thought though, right? If only she would be so frank with her friends. Now let's get to the main target. Thinking about him gave me goosebumps. I'm busy, bae. Go hang with your friends for now. He was playing Call of Duty on his phone. I was here to break up with him, but hang on a minute. This guy had skill. I want to have a go. Since when did you know how to play this game? Hmm. He looked kind of touched that I was showing an interest. Okay, I'll wait until after this, and then we will split up. I looked for Leo, but he didn't even recognize me. Poor him. He'd been searching for Billie Eilish since morning. While Leo was complaining, he helped me quickly remove my makeup so I could go back to looking like me before anyone guessed what I'd just done. From that day onwards, Kayla's friends cut her off so she could only cling to Xander. And from my point of view, he seemed to be tired of this clingy girl. Now even her look made him sick, huh? The time has come. I put makeup on his Kayla again and found him. I want this bag. Don't try to trick me with a fake one. Okay, as you wish. I want you to give up COD. That way you can only stay by my side. Okay, I'll follow you all day. I want to throw a party and invite the whole school. Your task is to get everyone to gather around me like they used to. If you can't do that, we'll break up. Deal. But... I see everyone likes you. Right, Evie? Holy mother! Did he recognize me already? But since when? I have to acknowledge your talent. If only you hadn't shown me your charm, you wouldn't have been exposed. Well, Kayla looks like a picture. But a dull one compared to you. You have such a good eye. However, you're no different from her. Miss Helen is your mom, right? Don't be surprised. I'm a better observer than you think, just like you. I know that Kayla was the instigator of the disturbance in the class that sent your mom to the hospital. I already apologized to your mom for Kayla's behavior. And if you want to know why I did that, it's because I have a big crush on you. Oh my god. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. But, okay, taking it as a slap in the face for Kayla on behalf of my mom, I still agreed to date him. The next day, I showed up again at school as Ariana Grande, simply because I wanted to. But this time, I also played another role. 
Xander's girlfriend. As usual, every time I dressed up as a new character, all eyes were on me. But this time, it was more epic when I walked side by side with the hottest guy in school. When Leo saw that I was with Xander, he rolled his eyes at me, then walked off. Then Kayla walked around the corner, saw us together, and started shouting at me. How dare you steal my man? You're just some pathetic wannabe. Xander took my arm and yelled at her. Evie's creative, sweet, and really funny. I want to be with her. I like her. Kayla's face dropped. Then she pointed her finger in front of him. How could you do this to me? I will get you back for this. Then she huffed off. Xander looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then he invited everyone to a party at his house that night to celebrate the fact that I was now his girlfriend. Was he serious? But whatever. It would be rude to say no, right? So that evening, I went to his party. To my surprise, Kayla was already there. So I flirted with Xander to annoy her further. Then suddenly, Xander leaned in close to my face, which made my whole body feel hot. What was happening? He... he was going to kiss me? But then he whispered in my ear, You haven't told me how you feel about me yet. <laughs> you were looking forward to this answer, weren't you? I... But before I could reply, Leo appeared out of nowhere, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. Ugh! What on earth are you doing? I'm the one who should be asking you that question. What on earth were you going to say? That I have feelings for you too? This whole thing is a setup between Xander and Kayla to humiliate you. Lucky for you I arrived just in time to overhear Kayla talking to her friends about this dirty plan. Are you done talking? Do you really think I'd fall into their trap that easily? I already know their dirty tricks, and I was about to tell everyone what jerks they are. But then you showed up and ruined my plan. I don't care how clever and perfect your plan is. How long are you going to continue this tiring game of dispute? They think just because they're both hot that they can treat everyone else like they're puppets. Well, I've had enough. Evie, you're better than this. I don't like this revenge-seeking version of you. Can you please just stop it and go back to normal? Leo walked away in a huff and left me out here alone in the street. I stormed home and took off my makeup. Why was Leo so mad at me? I did nothing wrong. The gentle Leo I knew never had gotten mad or even went against my will and was always the most enthusiastic supporter every time I imitated someone. What had gotten into him? I called him continuously, but Leo turned off the phone. Ugh. I felt so alone, it was horrible. Then I heard a knock on my door. Mom peered her head around it. Seeing me upset, she came over and cuddled me. It felt good having her comfort me, so I ended up blurting out everything to her. Hmm. It sounds like Leo was just worried about you. But as for Xander and Kayla, they're not worth your time or effort. Don't become someone you're not just to get revenge on people who don't deserve you. But... Suddenly, I heard rustling outside of my bedroom window. Then Leo poked his head through it. If you're not tired, then keep copying. You keep following me around like a pet. Go live your own real life. Mom and I both laughed along with him. Then I hugged Leo and told him I was sorry. It's true that pretending to be someone else is exhausting. And I must admit, I was wrong to use Kayla's name to sabotage her relationships. Tomorrow, I'll find her and apologize. Even though I don't want to. But I have to find a way to end this peacefully. Then... I can focus on just being me for a while, without any of the drama. It's the country's fair day today, or as I like to call it, my winning day. See that huge plushie over there? It's about to become mine. Ready, set, and yes, bullseye! I excitedly took the bear when it suddenly got yanked away by this crazy bull. Hey, I won that bear fair and square!
But I saw it first. Now hand it over, Hobbit. Hobbit? I yanked the bear from him, but it ended up ripping in half. His girlfriend burst into tears, and now I'm like a red rag to him. He rushed towards me, and before I could even think straight, my fist took over. How many times have I told you, Angie? A girl doesn't just raise her fist and cause trouble like that. It was self-defense. He was gonna hit me, Mom. I'm done with this. Like father, like daughter. Why are you even bringing him up? He left us years ago, so let him stay out of our lives. Even thinking about him made my blood boil. I turned to the window, avoiding the look I knew my mom was giving me. When we got home, we found the door open. Something wasn't right. I quickly ran into the house and saw black shadows standing in our living room. Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? All hail our new leader. The light suddenly came back on, and I saw them all bow to me? Angelina, I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm Nick Mason, Mr. Bruno's right-hand man. My dad sent you here? From this day on, you will become our new leader of the X organization on his behalf. You gotta be kidding me. For so many years, he hasn't cared about whether we live or die, and now he suddenly wants me to take over? And look at you all. This organization seems no good. Please don't misunderstand us. X organization was founded by your father to help the local people and fight for justice. But things took a horrible turn, so I'm afraid he's gone to jail for a little while. He's in jail? Oh, my head. Fighting for justice? That's why he's in jail now? Your father put the safety of the seaport local first. In doing so, he fell into the enemy's trap. You will understand him better if you accept his wish and become our leader. As much as I hate to admit it, I missed my dad. He once promised that he would skip his work and hang out with me on my birthday, but then he just disappeared without a word and has been quiet for the past six years. Until now. Darling, I have something for you. She gave me some old letters and a plushy bear, which I'd begged my dad to buy for me. She'd hid it from me the whole time, as she was mad at my dad for always risking his life for things that weren't any of his business. It turned out that my dad had still cared about me, even without me knowing. Mom, I've made up my mind. I hope you'll support me. So, my mom and I had a long journey to the seaport of the city where my dad's ex-organization was secretly operating. We walked into the market, then stopped at a large fish shop. How on earth does an organization have their secret base in such a crowded place? The most dangerous place is the safest one. Remember that. I remembered my dad used to say this to me when I was a kid too. This must be his crazy idea. Nick led me into a room at the back of the store and introduced this as the organization's base. So this is where my dad used to work, and he'd still kept the same old hat all these years? Let's get to work. There's been a lot of theft going on in town lately. Every night, the thieves break into stores and steal everything they can. People are panicking right now, so we need to solve this as soon as possible. Isn't this the police's responsibility? If they were capable, we wouldn't have to get involved. That's why your father maintains this organization. Now you need to settle in a bit. I've arranged your accommodation and enrolled you in a local school. Remember, your identity is top secret. For the next few days, at 5 a.m. every morning, Uncle Nick got me up and took me to the port to tell me more about the thieves. However, he just joined the fish auction the whole morning instead of actually doing anything serious. So I went somewhere else and pretended to talk to the fishmongers about the burglaries in town. At that moment, a guy in a cap that covered his face bumped into me. Hey, dude, nice bracelet, but ever taught to apologize? Hey, hey, take it easy. You're making a scene. Okay? Maybe I should just behave like a normal schoolgirl here. Having to get up so early in the morning to go to the port also made me too exhausted to study anything. One morning I was falling asleep at my usual place when some noise woke me up. A group of gangsters was teasing a boy? Dude, I'm trying to catch some shut-eye over here. Shut up, loser. Uh-oh, they were messing with the wrong person. I grabbed a nearby mop and made some fancy moves that took them all down, then dragged the flabbergasted nerd out of there. He wasn't calm enough to run for his life. This little guy is Killian. Ever since that day, he kept following me and wouldn't shut up about how strong I was, saying things like, I could never imagine a small person like you having such crazy strength. Or, they all pick on me, but you, Angel, don't. Then, let's be friends. I have no peace when he's around. While I was trying to make some space for myself, a call suddenly came from Uncle Nick. One of the jewelry shops in the city just got burglarized. Can you help? What? Yeah, I'll head back to headquarters and set up a plan. You can count on me. 
I then hung up, and that's when I heard a ball hitting the floor. I turned around, and there was Killian, standing behind me, shocked to the core. He'd obviously heard the whole conversation. If you utter a word of this to anyone, you'll not wake to see another day. Do you hear me? I... I can help you. I know this town like the back of my hand. Okay, we can be friends, or associates, as long as you keep quiet. After school, Killian and I rushed to the crime scene. While wandering around, I spotted a shiny thing among the broken glass. It must have been from those thieves. But wait, I've seen this D symbol somewhere. I was about to pick it up when Killian grabbed my hand, shivering. Bro, it's her who attacked us back then. That gangster suddenly came at me. I tried to dodge him, but ended up toppling over backwards. Suddenly, a strong arm held me back and shielded me from the punch. Mamma mia, who's this handsome hunk? I wrapped my arms around him and pulled out my inner damsel in distress. Oh, my hero, these jerks won't leave me alone. Please save me, I'm scared. Mess with my friend one more time and you're dead meat. Get lost. He turned to me, making sure I was okay, then parted way. Through Killian, I found out his name is Frank a senior at our school, and he's known for his cold and reserved demeanor. Definitely my type of guy. But wait, what about the bracelet? I returned to the broken glass window. The bracelet was nowhere to be found. At school, all students were constantly talking about these recent burglaries. Everyone was worried about who would be the next victim. When will all this nonsense stop? I wonder who their next target will be. Don't you see? The recent victims were all the big shots in town, and the crimes were all on the days the police weren't out patrolling. So then, Graham's jewelry shop and Holden's boutique store could potentially be their next target? That makes sense! Uh, wait, Frank? Now that you're here, I feel so much safer. It'll probably be Holden's because Graham already added a new security system to his shop. Please stop fiddling with your hair like that. Good observation. The police don't patrol the port tonight, so they might make a move. So stay still inside, will you, sweetie? Aww. But his sweetie still got to watch Holden's shop and catch the thieves red-handed tonight. An hour had already passed, but nothing had happened. Right at that moment, Nick received a phone call that Graham's shop had just been robbed. The thieves broke the security system and everything had been taken. Nick snapped at me for acting impulsively without having any clear evidence. But this felt so sketchy though. Holden's store was way more vulnerable. It's like they knew we were waiting to ambush them here. A few days later, while I was patrolling around the shopping street, Killian informed me that there was a suspicious masked man sneaking around the pearl shop. I immediately dashed there, right at the moment he was breaking the lock. In the blink of an eye, I kicked him, knocking him to the ground. Angelina, holy crickets, are you okay? I looked up to see Frank running towards me. The thief immediately rose up, causing me to fall back, then fled the scene right away. Catch the thief, quick! Frank and Killian darted past me and followed the guy. I waited for them at the harbor, but only Killian came back. Oh, sorry, Angelina, but I have to say this. There's something fishy about Frank. I think he's on the thief's side. Oh, come on. Are you jealous of him? How do I know you're not their spy? What do you mean? You've been acting suspicious from the get-go. You wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. And remember how you listened in on my conversation with Nick? And what about when you made me so sure it was Holden Shop that would be the next target, hmm? And now you're blaming Frank? You're so wrapped up in that jerk. I saw him purposefully let that thief go. When I was about to catch up to him, Frank suddenly stopped, making me crash into him. Then the thief got away. That, that can't be. He's always there to help me. I'm the one who's always backing you up, but you only see that fraud as your hero. Ugh, just forget it. Wait, I, I had no idea who to trust. It was all so confusing. Right at that moment, I got a message from Frank asking me to go to this meteor camping place as he had something important to say to me. Okay, it was time to confront him and get the truth. I rushed there as fast as I could, only to find nobody? I looked around and noticed this suspiciously lit up tent. The tent flap suddenly opened and a shadow bolted towards me. Hey, hey, calm down, it's me. I opened my eyes to see Frank in front of me. He'd set up this whole place for me? Frank suddenly took my hand and confessed. Angelina, I've fallen head over heels for you. I was wondering, will you be my girlfriend? Together, we could be a power couple. With your ex-organization and my Darkwalkers clan backing us, how do you know I'm related to ex-organization? Huh, 
I've been watching you since that first day you wandered around the fish market with that old Nick. <laughs> Remember this bracelet? You almost got me that time. You, you shameless, rotten, stinking skunk! I even trusted you over Killian! Oh, come on. It's not my fault you fell for me and betrayed your best friend. You and I are more alike than you think. It's only fitting that we become a team. Enough! Listen carefully. I'm never going to team up with a dirtbag like you. H how did you- Guys, take her! From the tents, Frank's minions came out one by one and surrounded me, then gradually tightened the siege. Let's see who's the boss now. Oh, no, 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 I fell into his trap. Those punks held a rope ready to tie me up, but right at that moment, I heard a car engine approaching. Is that- Killian leading Nick and the X organization? He jumped out of the car, ran past the minions and Frank to get to me. Angelina, are you alright? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? I shook my head and felt so touched. He'd come to save me. I thought you were mad at me. I was, a little bit. But I couldn't let you do all this alone, so I went to Uncle Nick. Behind Killian, Uncle Nick and the team had seized all the thieves and their ringleader Frank. Now they'd spill all their dirty secrets in front of the law. It turns out, my dad was about to expose the Darkwalker clan for their evil antics when they framed him for intentionally causing injury and put him behind bars. Since I became the new leader of X, Frank had been trying to seduce me so he could manipulate the organization. Finally, though, my dad was found innocent and released. Mom and I welcomed him home with open arms. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind. I was afraid I would put you in danger. It's all right, Dad. You must have had a hard time, too. I'm sorry for taking so long to realize how proud I am of you. I missed you so much. Dad was super impressed with what we had accomplished for the organization. He even decided to let me continue to be the leader, all the while supporting me and teaching me his tricks. And I know for sure, everything will turn out okay, especially with this guy by my side. So, did I do a good job proving myself, lady boss? The vice leader position seems to suit me well, don't you think? Hmm, you do deserve a promotion. How does vice leader and boyfriend sound? Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approved. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxury since the day I was born with this silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crave them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me, while Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? <sighs> That's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, 
Here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your lock of gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable, but I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait. Give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha! <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in all of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye! Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm... How about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an ask me a question story on IG and asked Beth to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, <gasps> except for this guy. Hey Sugar Plum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> the next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe. Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough! Take this stinky shoe away from me! We are over! And so, my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet, surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual, when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight! All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well, as long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait. Who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural, blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without hide and crease insoles. Check. 
White teeth, no cavities. Check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office asking him for Connor's school report. And it was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher. Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor Beth also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me. Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy. Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into Josh. He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now. So I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come, as the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair, Wh why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait! Why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office, 
I rushed there to find out the culprit's flashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was bad. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their text about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer. So I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs>I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny at all. Especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won The Voice Kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. The one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image! I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do, but just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest, people would be, look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> the name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me, and now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. 
Oh, right. Let's check out my new video. Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame. Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends. It's only been 10 hours, but look at this. There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. Yay! Let's see. Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring, but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat. Please reply to my comment. What on earth? Earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content. It's all about Olivia. Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison. Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark, please. Shut up, just wait. One day, y'all gonna become my fans, too. Finally, what a long day. But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now. I was struggling to set up my camera when Mom opened the door and peeked in. You've started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of. That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it, the moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. <sighs> okay, three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face. A stranger. Not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello? But who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel, are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring. If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place. This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to. Buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> what a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped, and you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah, blah, blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right! My old neighbor Dylan! His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison. The best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> 
She was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me. So I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me! Suddenly a big looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh god, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room, but it's okay. We can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time, and a week later we became an item. Fast, yes, but when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange, but why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia. But Gigi, Bella, Lily, Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them, but no way can Replica compete with the original. Still, isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> so, did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? I rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. Or, I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm gonna be late for my appointment. Look, my face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? But I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me! And her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing! Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. 
Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside, why I absolutely needed plastic surgery, why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear up my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me. But men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through. But everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true, but the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes. This was my first ever day at high school. And naturally, I'm owning it. I mean, who wouldn't want to befriend someone as beautiful and friendly as me? By lunchtime, I already had loads of new friends, and everyone flocked around me to hear stories about my amazing life. I soon became super popular at school. I was the gorgeous, enchanting blonde beauty. Do you know what the best part was? Boys started noticing me too. Even the captain of the basketball team, Mitch, took a liking to me. It makes sense. I mean, obviously, the best-looking boy in the school is going to be interested in the best-looking girl. And guess what? He's following me on my way home right now. Stalking me much, huh? Just wait for it. It seemed like my new life here in this school was going to be awesome. Well, well, Mandy. That was not an easy question, but you answered it perfectly. Great work. See, I'm not just a pretty face. I'm also one of the smartest students in the school. My admirers grew and grew. It seemed like everyone wanted to spend time with someone as perfect as me. Here, I was telling my new friends about how at first, people sometimes misjudge me, as I come from a well-educated and extremely successful family. My parents are super wealthy individuals who encourage me to always be the best version of myself and strive hard to never let them down. Hey, Mandy, pardon me, but how come you never wear designer clothes or use anything expensive? She looked down at my tatty-looking sneakers. I see why it might seem a little peculiar, but you see, I dress this way because my parents value the importance of being humble. That's also how I live. Goodness is better than beauty, right? Then I pulled out my phone and showed them the grades from my last school. Everyone gasped at me for being so excellent. I was loved, admired, adored. But of course, being this amazing meant that there's just gotta be quite a few kids being jealous of me. I mean, I suppose I couldn't blame them. After all, 
I dazzled like a diamond, while they were just dull and ordinary. One time after an exam, as soon as the teacher left, this girl called Layla stood up and said, Mandy cheated. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it too. She checked her phone during the exam. Everyone was gasping in shock. Right at that moment, the class president, Marshall, shouted, Hey, he quit it. We all know Mandy's a great student. There's no way she cheated. Huh, that's what I'm talking about. Layla and Susan must be bursting with envy that their petty plan to ruin me didn't work. And the class president, hmm, he came out of nowhere to protect me. He must be another one of my many admirers. But sorry, Marshall, I'm way out of your league. A girl like me needed a handsome, rich, mature kind of guy. These boys at school are cute, but they're just boys. They're beneath me. One time I was in a rush and didn't have time to search my locker, so I accidentally took the wrong textbook with me to class. Seeing my mistake, Layla and Susan immediately jumped in. Uh-oh, what's this? We thought Miss Perfection here never messed anything up. I didn't even have a chance to say anything, as this Beth girl spoke up. He cut it out. Who doesn't make mistakes once in a while, huh? Here, you can share mine. Oh, wow. This girl was kind of nice. It was good to have an ally to deal with Layla and Susan. So at lunchtime, I joined Beth's table. We started chatting, and she was clearly fascinated by how amazing my life was. Great. Now I had a faithful sidekick. <laughs> Hey, Beth, help me do the homework for today, okay? Uh, again? I have to attend a very important party with my parents tonight. There will be politicians and plutocrats. I won't have time to do homework. Now I have to go home early to get dressed and do my makeup. Bye! I didn't need to turn around to see her funny, bewildered face. She looked like that every time I asked her to do my homework. But it was worth it. Right, Beth? She got to hang out with the hottest prodigy in school. Me! So a little bit of extra homework was a small price to pay for such a privilege. You know, to me, that homework was nothing. I just didn't have time for it. I had to admit that having Beth around was very convenient. She made sure my grades stayed top of the class, leaving me time to play polo, go to the golf club, and attend charity functions with my parents. She also let me borrow her dresses, bags, makeup, and this super cute pair of high heels. My friends admired me, strangers idolized me, my teachers adored me, and I had a wonderful loyal best friend. Life was perfect. Until one day, as I was shimmying along the hallway, I noticed something odd. People weren't giving me their usual looks of adoration. Instead, they were turning their noses up at me. Huh? What was happening? Hey, Beth, do you know what's going on? People are acting really weird. She just shrugged. I don't know. Let's see. I tried to tell myself that it was no big deal, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong. Then later that day, my worst fears were confirmed. As I entered the classroom, Marshall came over to me and waved his phone in my face. Good game, Miss Perfect. Turns out you're just a big fat liar. I looked at his phone and saw a long post with a lot of photos attached. There's a big title saying, The Truth About Mandy the Liar, and each photo came with a caption. Mandy's house is actually very ordinary. She lives with her grandparents. There are no luxurious mansions or wealthy parents. When Mandy just came to the school, she made friends with everyone bragging about her fame, fortune, and popularity. I don't know who she is, so what if we just shared the same path to the bus stop? Who said that I intend to get acquainted with her? Her transcript from her old school isn't even hers. She's just photoshopped her name on it. Every time she stood up to answer a question or take a test, she cheated, so she got a good grade. God, all this? How did they know? It felt like my heart had lodged in my throat, and my mind was spinning. My eyes blurred when I saw Layla and Susan approaching me. I stared at them in shock. Mandy, honestly, we don't hate you. It's just that we realized your stories were ridiculous, so we decided to find out the truth. 
That's right. But you sure did cover your tracks. We couldn't find a thing. Hang on. So who found these pieces of evidence? I did! Right at that moment, my so-called best friend appeared, followed by the homeroom teacher. Mandy, I know you think I'm some desperate wannabe you can control, but no! I soon worked out that everything you said was a lie, so I gathered evidence to prove it. Everyone was gawping at me with disappointment. I felt completely overwhelmed by the situation. This couldn't actually be happening. I pinched my arm. Ouch! It was as painful and as real as what was going down before my eyes right now. Beth continued. It's not good for you to live a lie like this. Who even are you? Ah! Reality images started flooding into my mind, making my brain feel like it was going to explode. I grabbed my head and ran out of the classroom. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the hospital. The homeroom teacher was sitting next to me, and my grandparents were also there. They all looked very disappointed. Mandy, the principal was very angry and was about to expel you. But it was Beth and her friends who convinced him to let you stay. What? Beth? But she was the one who exposed me. Noticing my surprise, the teacher continued. After seeing your reaction, Beth realized that perhaps you had a psychological problem, so she convinced us to help bring you to the hospital for diagnosis. I looked up at my grandparents. They were all in tears. Unexpectedly, I burst out crying. I longed so much to have a dream life full of fame, riches, and admirers that I drew a vision for myself in another reality. I was so absorbed in that illusory scenario that I forgot my own reality. This was last month, and I'm currently on medication for my delusions, and I'm also seeing a therapist. Right now, I'm on my way to see Beth, Layla, Susan, and Marshall. No, I'm not making it up. I really am meeting them. Oh gosh, there they are. This is scary, but it's something I've got to do. So I took a deep breath, then taking my therapist's advice, I spoke from the heart. Hi guys, thanks for coming. Firstly, I want to apologize for lying. The truth is, I've lived the lie so much that I could no longer distinguish what was real and what wasn't. My therapist helped me see that this all began after I lost my parents. Part of my subconscious craved for this dream life so badly that I created a new one. This way I didn't have to accept the truth, which is that my parents have passed away and I live with my dirt-poor grandparents. When I finished talking, I looked at them, half expecting them to shout at me or something, but instead, Beth smiled at me and said, It took a lot of guts to come here and say that. I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have outed you like that but I didn't know you were ill. Same. I'm proud of you. Me too. Me three. Now, when are we going to order cake? <laughs> <laughs> so, what now? Well, I'm still taking my medication and talking to my therapist. I can now tell the difference between the make-believe and reality. Also, I'm back at school, and my teachers and classmates have all been really welcoming. Better still, I now have some awesome friends who like me for me. And you know what? It turns out that living in reality isn't actually so bad after all. <laughs>